Here we go with another trading strategy video on the M15. This is the execution time frame. We use the four hour and the daily for our higher time frame bias and then the M15 to execute mostly on FX pairs, but you can also trade this on futures. But before we get into that, we have a trading strategy ebook out with 22 trading strategies. You can get that by clicking the link below to subscribe to our newsletter. And when you subscribe, you get this ebook. So the strategy is a bit more complex. You need to understand a couple of concepts for this strategy to work. And that is, of course, the trend mechanics. And then we also need to talk about supply and demand. We need to talk about order blocks, fair value gaps. And that's pretty much it, I think. So this is what a classic entry looked like. What we want is first, firstly, the levels I have on my charts are yesterday's high low, last week's high low, last month's high low, last year's high low. Yeah? It is incredibly important that you only trade this strategy when yesterday's high or low has been tagged. So you will want to see the green line or the red line, price getting there, tagging the level or taking it out and then retracing and changing the trend. Yeah? So we want the last significant low of the uptrend taken out or the last significant high of a downtrend taken out, ideally with displacement. What does that mean? It means we have to go down with momentum. And when we go down with momentum, we leave fair value gaps. Fair value gaps are simply the spaces between the highs and lows of the first and the third candle. And then the space in between is the fair value gap. You could also call it liquidity gap. Some traders say that. That's totally fine. doesn't really matter what you call it or liquidity void. So once we have that, yeah, the displacement after tagging yesterday's high or low and the trend change, we are then looking for a pullback into a Fibonacci level. And that Fibonacci level is the 62% retracement. This is exactly where we set our entry order and then our stop loss goes exactly at high you can add some pips to account for spread some padding that's fine and then for our target we use this whole leg up here we measure it from top to bottom and this is the 50 percent level and we target the first low below the 50 percent level so inside this area that would be this low in this case however this was such a strong departure out of here that we want to target this because this often rejects price and you see we had a reaction to it just not a strong one but that is fine because 4R, 4R on a trade is absolutely enough. Now the next thing we really want to um, be aware of is symmetry. So this is basically a head and shoulders here and we want this part, the left shoulder to the head, take roughly as much time as the head to the right shoulder. So if this goes on like this and then comes back here, this is not correct. This is not a correct entry. We need this to happen with symmetry. And you will see that in my other entry examples as well. Now, one last piece to the puzzle is, of course, the higher time frame. We cannot just take every trend change because we would get absolutely destroyed by the market. We need to have that higher time frame picture to make sense. And I use the four hour and a daily chart for that. So we go to the four hour chart. You can see that we faked out this high, which is great. We took out liquidity. So that is one bonus. When we zoom to the left, we can also see that we are actually in this zone here, which some people would call it an order block. Some people would call it a supply zone. It doesn't matter. It is a strong resistance on your chart. You can also draw a level here, of course. And this level previously was massively attracted. So last time price came here, we had a massive move to the downside. Now we are back at that level. We expect the same reaction. It is very likely. Well, not this strong, but we do expect a reaction strong enough for us to take our profits. And then we go to the daily charts. You can see this zone is also visible on the daily charts, strong push down, and then here's your order block. So that is trade number 
one. Let's take a look at another example. We are on the GBP Swissy here. We can see we tagged yesterday's high after a nice move up. We came down with displacement. Here's an FBG, here's one. We came back after taking out this low and this low and came back into our Fibonacci retracement, the 62% level. And then the target, we measure this whole leg. We target the first low below the 50% level. And that's our 4R once again. Two trades in one week and you're already up 8R. Higher time frame bias is, you can see here was our entry. Well, once again, we are at an order block that we punched into. We are at FVGs. You can see there is an inverse FVG here that is also holding. So it held here and it's holding again. So if you are unfamiliar with that concept, simply Google it, inverse fair value gap. It used to be a balanced price range as well. So fantastic area for price to, again, make another down leg after this deep retracement. We are obviously in a downtrend here. This area up here could also be called K-fill. Uh, Linda Rushka called it that way. Any of those concepts work as long as you are in an area that is higher time frame support or resistance. And let's have a look at one more example. Once again, we are here at yesterday's low. This time we are looking at a long. We make a strong push out of this area after taking out yesterday's low, which is this red line. Took out this high, took out this high, made an FVG here. And we are also at this blue line. This blue line here is last month's low, so a strong level already. So this already gives us some higher time frame confluence here, um, but not enough yet. We are looking to the four hour chart. See this low we took out, this low we took out, this was last month's low. On the daily chart, there are more lows here that we took out. And then here we didn't take out this low. However, we came very close to it. So if we look at this area on the four hour chart, 100% there is a strong demand zone down here. And all of that together is good enough for us to want to take this trade. Once again, we measure the whole leg down and we take and we target the first high above the 50% level this time. So in this case, I went a bit higher. Both of these levels are fine to take your profits. 2.5 or 2.8. Again, with a stop loss at the low, can add some padding here, it's totally fine. It's not gonna make or break you as a trader. And that's it. So this is a fairly complex strategy. So let's take a look at one more example. This one is a bit less obvious. Yeah, we're tagging yesterday's low, strong push to the upside, taking out this high, this high, this high, but without a close. Ideally, you want to have a close above the highs. We are making fair value gaps on the way up. So we have our strong displacement. But do we want to set an order here that depends entirely on the higher time frame bias that we get? And here you can see that we are in an uptrend. We just rejected this FVG, which was accompanied by this inverse fair value gap. And then down here, we had another FVG that was respected, not close below. And now we are coming back to the top. And when we go to the daily chart, we can see that we are actually punching into this order block here or moving higher strongly. So I think we are good here with the higher time frame bias. And you can see this balanced price range here on the four hour chart is really holding up the price. So we come back into this area and this time we measure this leg here. Where's our target? 
first high above the 50% level. Here we go, 2.8 R on this one. So absolute key for the strategy, absolute key is the higher time frame bias. Where are we on the chart? Does it make sense for price to turn around here? Yeah? So either you're playing the pullback down or you're playing the next extension after the pullback. One of those two scenarios. Sometimes you are in a range and you're playing simply the high or the low of the range. And that is also fine. But I prefer one of those two scenarios. And then a daily chart is simply there for additional confirmation. But most of your higher time frame clues you can take or should take from the four hour chart. Here on the first example on the OCN, we played the pullback, the retracement that was likely to come. On the GBP Swissy, we played the next extension after the pullback because we are obviously in a downtrend here. On this exotic pair here, the Aussie South African Rand, we are playing the pullback after an extension to the downside, taking out liquidity here. Strong demand zone to the left. And on the South African Rand Yen, we are playing the extension after the pullback. So you really want to have markets that are nicely swinging and you are either trading the reversal or the trend continuation. Now you can always, of course, play with, around with your trade management. If you are playing a trend continuation, maybe you trail your stop and instead of taking full profits, that is totally up to you. I found that the Fibonacci level method works best for me personally. Well, that's preference. So have fun playing around with this and see you in the next one.